we will now examine 41 references to Jesus' second coming. And what we're going to do is keep a count of all the different ways that the early Christians referred to this second coming. You will see the counters on the screen already, but the one we want to really watch is the one in the lower right, the return counter. We want this counter to be ideally zero, if my theory was to be strong, but the more counts that we find in this category, the return category, the less believable the Jesus myth theory would become. So now let's go ahead and look at these references. Therefore judge nothing before the time, until the Lord comes. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. But each one in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. If anyone does not love the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be accursed, O Lord, come. The power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the promise of his coming? In the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Until the coming of the Lord. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. And from the glory of his power, when he comes in that day. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the rightness of his coming. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Peace from him who is and was and is to come. Who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly. But hold fast what you have till I come. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Surely I am coming quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The next three references could fit into a miscellaneous category, but I didn't have room on the screen. If you want to, put it in a new category. I'll go ahead and put it in the appearances category. And to wait for his Son from heaven. Until the day of Jesus Christ. Without offense, till the day of Christ. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him at his coming. When Christ, who is our life, appears, and when the chief shepherd appears, blameless until the Lord Jesus Christ's appearing, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. The elders who are among you I exhort, I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have looked at 41 different references by 14 different authors, and not one reference referred to Jesus' second coming as a second coming. On top of that, six references were made that called it a revelation, something previously unknown being made known. Remember that a revelation carries with it the idea of something being shown for the first time. How could 14 different early Christian writers 
across 41 different references pointedly and unanimously ignore the returning aspect of Jesus' second coming. If Jesus had never lived a life on earth, then this makes perfect sense. If Jesus had lived a life on earth and performed miracles and rose from the dead only a few decades earlier, this absence of Jesus' second coming in all of these references must be explained. Did the epistle writers not know the words for return and come again? Of course the epistle writers knew the Greek words for return and come again. Paul uses them several times in his letters. The question becomes, why would all of these references to Jesus' second coming have no indication that he had ever been on earth before, while they do have an indication that he was going to be revealed to mankind for the first time? This becomes very difficult to explain from the orthodox perspective, but from the perspective of the Jesus myth theory, it fits like a glove. The early Christians did not know a Jesus on earth. They had no idea of any human Jesus that ever lived. He was always in heaven with his heavenly Father, and they eagerly awaited his arrival, his revelation at the end of time to come take them away from the terrible times that they were living in. This is just one puzzle piece that supports the Jesus myth theory. Now, in all fairness, I have deliberately postponed looking at one verse in Hebrews that does use the phrase, appear a second time. And I want to look at this verse in a future video to explain how this verse is not really a second coming reference. But if we simply took it at face value, we still have 41 references across 14 different authors that pointedly ignore the returning aspect with one verse seeming to support it. The question is, why would the earliest Christians avoid calling Jesus' second coming a second coming? We've just seen something incredibly amazing. None of the early Christian writers referred to Jesus' second coming as a second coming. They all referred to it as a coming, an appearance, a manifestation, um, a revelation, but not a return. Not a second coming, not a coming again, not a coming back. And the fact that six references use the word re reveal, revelation, gives a strong indication that these people expected to see Jesus for the first time. Jesus was a mystery. His existence was known, but his physical appearance was not known. His glory was not known. And this is why they would be able to refer to it as a revelation. So, this argues strongly for the Jesus myth theory. And it's not so good for the orthodox view. Although, it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't negate the orthodox view. But it looks a lot better in the Jesus myth view. So, that is one piece of evidence, one puzzle piece among tons of other puzzle pieces. And so this doesn't make or break anything. It's something that we put on the table and we examine it and we go, hmm, and then we keep examining things. When you have a ton of evidence on the table all pointing to Jesus myth, then you know it's a serious thing that you need to give some consideration to. So, that's the first puzzle piece I wanted to show you. Keep thinking, keep reading, keep learning, and uh, in the next video, I'll show you something else that's pretty amazing. Check you later.